Hi dogs, this is Dr. Yasmin Hasib and I welcome you all to the Royal Dog Line. Today there is another addition to our 5 minutes guideline series. And today we are going to discuss about the prevention and the management of the postpartum hemorrhage. This is the Green Top Guideline number 52 which was published in 2016 and let's move on to further. The layout of this guideline will be the definition, prediction and prevention, how to manage the postpartum hemorrhage, risk management and the summary with key points. The definition according to this guideline is the de traditional definition of the primary PPH is the loss of 500 ml or more of the blood from the genital tract within 24 hours of the birth. PPH can be minor which is 500 to 1000 ml or major more than 1000 ml. Major can further be subdivided into the moderate which is 1001 to 2000 ml and the severe which is more than 2000 ml. In women with a lower BMI like less than 60 kg even a lower level of the blood loss may be clinically significant. These all definitions are important and many a times you cut the questions from there. Secondary postpartum hemorrhage is defined as an abnormal or excessive bleeding from the birth canal between 24 hours and the 12 weeks postnatally. So note down this is 24 hours to 12 weeks postnatally. This guideline also includes the recommendations which are specific to the management of the secondary postpartum hemorrhage. So let's move on to the prediction and prevention in the appendix 2. They have said that the 40s, the 40s are related with the tone, tissue, trauma and the thrombin. The 40s, the first one is a tone and on the second part they are telling you about the risk factor or the nodes. Over distension of the uterus, intra-amniotic infection, functional or anatomical distortion of the uterus, uterine relaxant for example the magnesium and nifedipine or the bladder distension and the risk factors for this tone or the loss of the tone will be the polyhydramnios, multiple gestation, macrosomia, fever, prolonged rupture of the membranes, rapid labor, prolonged labor, fibroids, placenta previa, uterine anomalies and in the medications that are butylene, halogenated anesthetic, glycerol, trinitrite may prevent the uterine contraction. So all of these are the risk factors. Similarly, in the tissues, which is a retained cotyledon or centuriate lobe of the placenta or the retained blood clots. In the trauma, as you all know, there can be the laceration of the tears of the uterus, vagina, rectum, perineum, or extension lacerations at the cesarean suction, uterine rupture, uterine inversion. All of these over here you can see in the risk factor, the precipitaceous labor as well as operative delivery. Extension can be malpositioning, deep engagement, specifically the second stage cesarean section. Uterine rupture because of the previous uterine surgery and high parity with excessive cord traction can even lead to the uterine inversion. So these are the three T's which we have studied next on. Move on to the another one which is a fourth T thrombin. Pre-existing states like the hemophilia, idiopathic, thrombocytopenic, purpura, von Willebrand disease, history of the previous PPH and history of the hereditary coagulopathies of the liver disease, bruising, all of them, they are the indicator for the postpartum hemorrhage. The acquired in the pregnancy, the thrombin difficulties or the problems are the gestational thrombocytopenia, preeclampsia with the thrombocytopenia like the HELP syndrome and you can see that there might be an elevated blood pressure. Disseminated intravascular coagulation which can be the gestational hypertensive disorders of the pregnancy. It can lead to coagulopathy in utero fetal demise or the severe infection because of the fever, neutrophilia, neutropenia, abruptio placenta presenting as an antipartum hemorrhage, amniotic fluid embolism which may present as a sudden collapse or the therapeutic coagulation. The patients who are taking the anticoagulants and there might be a history of the thromboembolic disease. So these are all the factors and you can get many EMQs and single best answers through this guideline. Prediction and prevention, the important points to be noted over here, uterine massage is of no benefit. Please note down in the profile axis of the PPH. 
prophylactic eutrotonics should be routinely offered in the management of the third stage of the labor to all of the women to reduce the risk of PPH. Then for women without risk factors for the PPH delivering vaginally, doxetocin on 10 international unit by IM injection. And in the cesarean, you have to give the five international unit by slow IV. Please note down the vaginal and cesarean and the dose and the route of the administration. Ergometrine oxytocinone may be used in the absence of hypertension in the women who are at increased risk of the hemorrhage as it reduces the risk of minor PPH. And then for the women at increased risk of the hemorrhage, it is possible that a combination of the preventive measures might be superior to syntocinone alone to prevent the PPH. Then consider the use of IV tranexamic acid. This is very important and usually it is asked in the questions during the exam as well as in MRCOG part 3 OSCE as well, 0.5 to 1 gram in addition to the oxytocinone at cesarean section in the woman at increased risk of the PPH. Then the management. This algorithm is very, very important. This is a flow chart and note down the words. Resuscitation, monitoring, investigation and the treatment should occur simultaneously. And in the major obstetrical hemorrhage, which is more than 1000 ml, or the major obstetrical hemorrhage, which is continuous, or there is a clinical shock, call for help, call all the team, including anesthetist, hematologist, blood to SVN laboratory and the consultant on call. Then the resuscitation, ABC, oxygen 15 liters, how much 15 liter fluid balance, 2 liter isotonic crystalloid, 1.5 liters colloid. Blood transfusions and the blood products keep the, keep the patient warm. Then monitoring and investigation, the 14 gauge cannula, 2 full blood count, coagulation, urea electrolytes, LFTs, cross matching, 4 packed RBCs, fresh frozen plasma, platelets, cryoprecipitate, oximeter, Foley's catheter, hemoglobin bedside, blood products, consider the central or the arterial lines, comments the record uh, and uh, on the charts and uh, weigh all the swabs and estimate the blood loss. Then in the medical management, rubbing, emptying the bladder, oxytocinone as we discussed, how much to be given, carboprost and the carboprost intramuscularly, then the mesoprostol dose, this is very important and consider tranexamic acid 1 gram. If the patient is not improving, then shift to the theater and the uterus is contracted or not, examination under anesthesia, any clotting abnormality has been corrected or not. Then consider the balloon tamponade or the brace suture, consider international radiology. If not improving, go to the surgery and then there is a stepwise uterine devascularization. You should know about the stepwise uterine devascularization. This is given in the guideline very well. Bilateral internal iliac ligation, hysterectomy or the uterine artery embolization. These are all the options and this flow chart is very important to revise before the exam and during the OSCE preparation. Then the secondary postpartum hemorrhage, they are saying it presents after 24 hours and the assessment of the vaginal microbiology should be performed in which the high vaginal endocervical swabs are very important and antimicrobial therapy should be initiated when endometriosis is suspected. Pelvic ultrasound is required to exclude the presence of the RPOCs and then the surgical evacuation of retained placental tissue should be undertaken or supervised by an experienced clinician. Then the risk management, you all know, this is very important, training preparation, including the incident reporting, multi-professional and the team rehearsals, documentation and debriefing. And in the summary, I would say that importance and classification of the PPH risk factors, their prevention, calling for help, resuscitation, investigation, monitoring, assessment, they go together. A wide underestimation of the blood loss and the clinical governance point. This is an important guideline for the EMQs and single best answer as well as in the OSCE. If you like our five minutes guideline series, give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues and spread the word so that people can get benefit from this. Thank you.